Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Tuliados, brought to you by his website, gtoul.com, gtool.com. That's where you can get his book, Bodybuilding, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, also available on amazon.com. You can also read the doctor's work every month in the pages of Muscular Development Magazine, and he's now a regular online contributor to musculardevelopment.com. You can get brand new content from the doctor every week there as well. Please welcome, from Athens, Greece, <clears throat> Dr. George Tuliados. How are you, doctor? Hello, Ron. I'm glad because uh, my next uh, online article will include the most famous and monstrous anabolic steroid, which is Trembolone, of course. Yeah, and, Trend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, two pages, and uh, yes, it's very extensively written. And as a matter of fact, today I posted on my website in English, uh, a, a, an article about testosterone, the wonder drug, the wonder miracle, the wonder medication. Yeah. Because why? Because testosterone is a cheap drug that can do the job or can assist in other uh, cases uh, where other expensive medications can replace. You know, the, so it's SSRIs and statins that are number one and two most prescribed medications. However, testosterone can both contribute to a better lipidemic profile and a better mood, you know, fight depression, also fight this lipidemia, you know, mental fat, metabolic syndrome, and more important, can fight against anemia. So EPO is not also, uh, is, is also an expensive uh, case. It can fight also an, uh, bone mineral density and osteoporosis where vitamin D3, K2, calcium can do a similar job. And also hypogonadism where there's no other drug can replace it. And uh, muscle wasting, of course, and uh, <clears throat> so the pharmaceutical uh, companies and the big pharma does not like this competition, you know, because it's very cheap. With five dollars, you can do many things. And uh, doctors mainly they want to prescribe to prescribe because they get profit from prescriptions. You know, it's a corrupted system. I have to admit. Yeah. Of course, as a doctor, I believe in a support medications, but uh, polypharmacy, you know, it's, it's a billion uh, dollars industry. And sometimes with 210 uh, cholesterol, you get prescribed for statins where you can reverse this either by a Mediterranean diet, you know, and uh, supplementation and exercise. And also with testosterone as well, you can fight this lipidemia. Um, so I, I write it down because I walk the talk for the rest of five years. I'm doing replacement therapy due to bodybuilding. So I believe this, uh, the combination of earning, uh, the experience, having the experience, which is hard, hardly end, and also having the medical data and the knowledge from the, um, university degree is something lethal, uh, fatal. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a killing combination. Yeah. You know, to, because as Jay Cutler told me, going just by book, by the book, because we, we had two seminars and somebody asked Jay, what do you think of this, of that? I say, the papers say in the, and the, you know, the forums or the, the, the online. Uh, uh, like the bro science? No, not just the no. bro science, but what was scientific. I mean, it was about, uh, what do you think of this, that high reps versus low reps? Yeah, uh, and and Jay said uh, going by uh, a site that that uh, go just by the book. You're missing half of the truth, which is also practicing to yourself and walk the talk. You know. Yeah. So just being a theoretical urologist or endocrinologist who never touch a, who never touched testosterone and never felt hypogonadic, as, because when we get off from steroids, we feel the hypogonadic environment. So uh, if you just a theoretical, or for instance, a woman endocrinologist. What the hell do you know about uh, how to feel like without libido, no? Yeah. With no self-esteem. Yeah, so uh, you have to combine these two things. Yeah. The yeah. academic the academic knowledge and the practical experience. Uh, exactly, yes, exactly. Well, that's why we have you. You're one of the only ones. So. And uh, Thomas also, he was a powerlifter. He used uh, some stories in the past. He follows TRT. So always trust a doctor who follows uh, TRT and ab about bodybuilding, who was trained at least, you know, and uh, perhaps touch some DECA or Anavar, because other doctors are not supposed to know nothing, you know? Right. Yeah, I think uh, O'Connor told me 
steroids were like 15 or 20 minutes in med school. They went over them very quickly, and that was it. <clears throat> yeah. Steroids, not anabolic steroids. So we learn about androgens, estrogens, you know, corticosteroids, uh, mineral corticosteroids, uh, DHEA, but not at all about anabolic steroids, which is a taboo subject. Mm, all right. Well, doctor, you have 10 questions to get yes. to. So okay, let's go. <clears throat> Here's a good one. How do I get rid of itchy skin during a cycle? What can help this problem? It's very annoying. Itchy skin. Well, itchy skin is something uh, to worry about. And itchy skin takes place under jaundice and cholestasis. Itchy mm. skin <clears throat> happens under bilirubin excess and the cholestatic enzymes ALP and GGT. And uh, the patients who have yellowish yellowish uh, skin under the, the the light and yellowish sclera they also have this itching mm -hmm. now itching also is another uh, effect of the mast cells mast cells are underneath uh, the skin and in the circulation that they are responsible for uh, this allergic reaction you know to some po some um, agents like pollen for for instance during the spring I'm allergic to, to pollen and uh, to, yeah, pollen come from the, from the trees, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's about uh, the, when, uh, when the time comes in the spring, the bees go to the, to the trees, you know, and get the fertilization. So uh, mast cells also play a role and you can use an antihistaminic drug because histamine is also responsible for this allergic reaction. Uh, now itching, uh, also comes as a result of niacin. Niacin is niconectin amide oxide. It's a vitamin B3. It's, it's responsible for vasodilation also, but elevating of HDL. And it causes this lobster skin, you know, and, and very itchy for the first 10 minutes if it's on an empty stomach. Yeah. So it's according to each case is different, you know. Uh, but uh, usually when we have an allergic reaction, you use local creams or gels of uh, compounds that they block histamine, you know, yeah. and they can lead to some uh, sleepness afterwards. Some, you know, you feel sleepy kind of. Yeah. In fact, a lot of people use Benadryl, which is the big trade name here for the antihistamine. A lot of people use Benadryl, not for itching or anything like that, but just to go to sleep as like a sleep aid. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Also, yes, it happens. True. Or they, they give it to their kids so their kids will stay asleep and not bother them all night. So <laughs> probably not the best thing to do. Yeah. Uh, here's one. I never heard of this. Dr. T, have you ever heard of triptorelin to return one's normal testicular function after long-term anabolic use? Triptorelin. Yes. We have discussed this before oh. in the series. Triptorelin is GnRH. It's gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone synthetic. And actually, what it does when, when it's prescribed, and what it does is actually to shut off for life your axis and the prostate cancer. Oh. So it's it's castration. It's chemical. It's technical. You get castrated with this. Oh God! When you have already developed prostate cancer, because the 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 link between you know testosterone and prostate cancer, which is false apparently. However, I was visited by a 70 year old man couple of months ago and he was castrated with zero testosterone hmm. about 50 or 100 testosterone that's what females have okay but he was also following his psa because he had prostatectomy you know and he was using triptorelin now triptorelin however in very small doses it's shown to can stimulate uh, gonadotropins in small doses because if it's abuse it does the job what we're supposed to do to shut off for life LH and FSH. Mm -hmm. So in small doses under very certain protocols, it can stimulate the HPTA and, as, uh, and perhaps it can substitute the PCT. You know, the PCT is supposed to elevate endogenous testosterone production after a steroid cycle. But I, I do not think that one or, or two uh, moderate uses of tritrolidin can solve the, 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 the problem and you can become eugonadic afterwards. Hmm. So it's perhaps a temporary solution as also PCT is temporarily under anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And then, of course, 
the only reasonable option sounds the testosterone replacement therapy for life. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you for the show. I'd like to know if Dr. T has online consultations. How can I get in contact with him? How can they reach you, Doctor? Sure. Uh, he can email me at G Tuliatos uh, Yahoo, uh, G Tuliatos 73 yahoo.gr. I also answer this on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. So everybody can find me if they send me a message. I answer them with my email, you know, and they can. Uh, Okay. Uh, send me there the question. Your, your website that we're looking at, gtoul.com, there's a contact and also, there. And also, yes, do that. And they can find my email over there, of course. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Uh, next question. Ron and George, have either of you taken test, DECA, and Primo at the same time for long periods? Test for replacement Primo to lower SHBG, DECA for joint and pain management. What are some sustainable doses? Thank you for the show and doing God's work. I have never done that. I've took I've never taken Primo long term, so my answer is already no. I don't know. How about you, doctor? Well, Primo because it's is a DHT derivative can affect sex drive to the better. Also, Winstrol does and Anabar does, but Primo, of course, is the least toxic of all. It's not a, a semi-alkylated, uh, and also Primo along with testosterone can can make you really horny because oh. they crash on SHBG. Okay, that's what they do. Besides, Primo is not uh, capable of producing estrogens. And estrogens, as we know, can send a negative signal to the hypothesis for testosterone production. Uh, but anyway, uh, Primo can do that. So Primo may be a libido enhancer, you know, within cycle, hmm. as also Proviron does and Mastron does because it's all synthetic DHT. Hmm. Uh, but uh, according to DECA, yes, <clears throat> I have been using uh, small doses of natural in order to lubricate my joints. Actually, yesterday I visited my orthopedic surgeon who injects me into the supraspinatus some enzymes mm -hmm. that are responsible for anti-inflammatory and recuperation. And uh, he explained to me, Doc, what are you using now as agents? So I told him I use three anabolic hormones, growth hormone, testosterone, and androlone in small doses. He, he, asked, he asked me, so what is the purpose of androlone? I told him that Nandrolone stimulates aldosterone and it can lubricate and provide some water into the synovial cavity, you know, and you have this kind of lubrication, uh, the water retention result, as all steroids do, but uh, you know that nandrolone can do, can make you really puffy at 400 milligrams, for instance. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so small and frequent doses is more healthy than shooting, for instance, 400 milligrams once a week. Yeah. And... Uh, what was the question also? Um, okay, so he wanted to know, have you ever taken de test DECA and Primo at the same time for long periods? Test for replacement, Primo to lower well, SHBG, and DECA for joint and pain management. And he wanted to know, what are some sustainable doses? So well, he wants to do this forever, been, basically, it sounds I, like. I have abused DECA, Primo, and, and testosterone as part of my off cycle uh, because Primo was available in Greece 20 years ago. So we used it. We used it also because it was ph pharmaceutical grade during the off season for lean gains. Okay, it's a weak anabolic, but you know that it works. So you can shoot about 600 milligrams of Primo per per week to the off season, 600 milligrams of Deca, and maybe uh, 750 of testosterone or a thousand. But uh, what doses? Now, Primo is a weak anabolic. I think it works for uh, anti-catabolic effect because it's not supposed to make you serious gains. It's not estrogenic. So I guess over half a gram it's necessary. Okay. Now, when I was using Primo in 2015 for two weeks, I was just using 100 milligrams. I just wanted to get a little bit jacked, you know. Yeah. I didn't go to, back to my old abuse. Now, DECA, uh, DECA works at 400 milligrams, pretty fair, because it's much anabolic than Primo. It's also estrogenic. So you have the benefit. And testosterone, we know that for a decent dose would be half a gram, of course. Yeah, 500 milligrams. Okay, fair enough. Next question, doctor. Do small doses, say two IUs of human growth hormone, affect prolactin levels? Now, I don't think so. Uh, I have checked my prolactin levels. And uh, what, I, what I have noticed is that after, after a while, when I stopped with, with DECA, it starts elevating a little bit. So I was using two months, a little bit of DECA before going to the Olympia to get a better shape. 
but a small dose, okay? Yeah. And after, I, after I, 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 without using any dust index, okay? And after a month, you know, I realized that my prolactin was about 20, 23. So I lower it down with dust index, but within the cycle, my prolactin was not over 15. So I believe that DECA still sustains and re is released uh, gradually, but also uh, it's a matter of uh, it's a matter of estrogens. When the estrogens are over 50, I believe that prolactin is more likely to elevate. Also, now about growth hormone, what I know about the guy talks about exogenously, okay, injecting. What do we know the correlation between testosterone and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, growth hormone and prolactin is the following. During puberty, the boys catch up in height, okay? Yeah. Uh, now, when some boys are genetically predisposed, they release massive waves of growth hormone and go to six feet, for instance, in high school. Yeah. Then they develop a little bit of genicomastia, which is prolactin-induced. Uh -huh. Why? Because from the anterior lobe of the pituitary, the adenohypophysis, uh -huh. from the same spot, almost, growth hormone and prolactin are, are released. So sometimes the pediatricians notice that there is genicomastia, which is prolactin induced, not uh, estrogenic. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, then they have to be treated accordingly with uh, a dopamine agonist. Now, also, we know that estrogens are necessary for the IGF-1 production. That's why abusing aromatase inhibitors and SERMs will lead to lower IGF-1 production because they have an impact, a negative impact on the liver and the, uh, est and the estrogen production and the IGF-1 also. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure if uh, there is increase in prolactin when you inject growth hormone. Mm. Okay? okay? Okay, good. Next question. I'm on TRT, 200 milligrams a week. Would it be beneficial to take fish oil and COQ10? Should I take one of them or both? 200 testosterone per week? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, Q10 is beneficial for the energy production in the cells and the, in myocardium. It, it has been promising along with L-carnitine because color carnitine provides f uh, fuel for fat, you know, for, because fat, uh, because heart burns fat under um, normal uh, metabolic rate. And uh, uh, when heart beats really fast, it burns lactate. So uh, L-carnitine along with Q10 are beneficial for myocardium contraction. Actually, they, they could be promising under cases of heart failure. Uh, so they, they're good with inotropic effects. And uh, what else? He, he, uh, he wanted to know about fish oil. Should he take fish, fish oil during so, uh... yeah, Fish oil is good for hydroglycerides. <laughs> But it may also help with LDL and total cholesterol. Of course, it's anti-inflammatory as well. Uh, it can be, it can act as a blood thinner because it also, it's anti-inflammatory and it inhibits platelet aggregation. The same, a similar mechanism with prostaglandins like aspirin does, but aspirin can lead to GIT bleeding and it can also impair uh, it can hinder uh, muscle inflammation. So fish oil is more friendly, okay, and uh, more healthy. Okay. Good. Yeah, he can use them. Uh, he can use his, uh, He can use um, 500 milligrams or one gram the most with meals because fish oil is an oily capsule and requires a fatty environment to be absorbed. So just drinking water in a fish oil is not good. Yeah. Well, you can also eat salmon. I mean, there are salmon, of mackerel. Course, yes, of course. Yeah. Other things, sure. Uh, it's funny how you talked about ephedrine. I've never tried it, but I do drink coffee. In what doses would ephedrine be used as pre-workout or for appetite suppression? How would the doctor compare ephedrine and clenbuterol? Which one is safer for the heart? Is ephedrine safer because of shorter half-life and you probably have less sleeping problems? So what doses? I don't even remember. It's been so long since I used ephedrine. Yes, that's a good question. And uh, as a matter of fact, CNS stimulus belong to the three class uh, categories of, uh, of uh, drugs that can may kill you in a heartbeat, along with insulin diuretics. Mm. Now, insul uh, now, ephedrine was available in 50 milligram tablet from Spain and Turkey. I mm. used them both. Spain, I used it in uh, two, 2000 and, uh, 2010, I used from Turkey. So uh, the classic combo, 
also described in Bill Phillips or William Welling books, where uh, 25 ephedrine, 250 caffeine, and uh, 500 aspirin, perhaps. Yeah. But I have been also using uh, 50 milligrams of ephedrine, which was, you know, really serious kick before a squat, for instance. Mm. Now, ephedrine has a half life of six hours, perhaps. It needs caffeine as a catalyst and also aspirin. But the most uh, promising among this combo, of course, is ephedrine. And then is caffeine and yeah. aspirin is a catalyst for the cyclic uh, AMP. Uh, ephedrine is very beneficial during dieting because it's an appetite suppressor, unlike lamuterol. Mm. But ephedrine is also good pre-workout. Unlike lambuterol, that it has 36 to 48 hours half-life and it still burns while you're sleeping. Some people go to bed with a heart rate out of and they sweat. Mm. Now, the best combo for fat burning would be clambuterol with T3. Mm. But for thermogenesis and appetite suppression, pre-workout would be ecastac. Mm. So mm. you take, for instance, your clambuterol with breakfast and your T3, and then when you hit the gym, you take your ecastack. However, clenbuterol needs two days off to get rid of the system. That's why <clears throat> I describe in my book to use it for two days on and two days off, because if you don't take a, a break for two days, you're going to get customized very easily for the receptors. Mm. So you must get rid. And those two days that you are not using clenbuterol, you may use ecastack more. Right. Okay. But ecastack and clenbuterol are also very dangerous for a hemorrhagic stroke, for a heart arrhythmia or a myocardial infarction, you know, for sweating and dehydration, for diarrhea, along with, uh, you know, caffeine, you you go, you flush uh, to the bathroom. Yeah. Insomnia, you know, <laughs> hypomania, you know, you become um, a manic, a maniac. <laughs> well, you're going to be ripped. <laughs> Some people, when, 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 they, when they have... We still, when they run out of cocaine, they're using uh, those teams and amphetamines. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy the stuff we put ourselves through, isn't it? Okay. Uh, can Dr. T please give an example of a beginner to intermediate cycle for someone who isn't interested in becoming a pro? It's my third and actual cycle. 300 milligrams testonanthate, 250 deca, 200 dihydroboldenone, okay, so equipoise, 25 milligrams aromasin week, injection every other day, 10 to 20 milligrams windstraw every other day, pre-workout for androgen receptor upregulation, appropriate for a 28-year-old with 95 kilograms at 180 centimeters and 10 to 12% body fat. What would be a good following bulking cycle for summer next year? Thanks in advance and keep it up. So it looks, I think he was telling you what his last cycle was. And he's looking for a recommendation for his next cycle. That's what well, it sounds like. Well, this is not a beginner cycle, okay? This is, uh, I wouldn't say it's a professional cycle, but it's, uh, uh, it's not a starter's beginner. Uh, it's not a starter cycle, of course. In my book, in, in, in Greek and in English, I think, I describe the beginner cycle of season and the advanced. So for the beginners, I advise some testosterone and faith, uh, or perhaps the guy who does not like injections, he can use transdermal testosterone along with peros testosterone. Mm. You know, so andriol caps with testosterone gels. Yeah. And then you can use also some proviron for the androgens also. And also you can use some bulking agents like tecadrabolin or dianabol. Mm. And uh, of course it's very similar then the equipose with the decadrabolin, okay? Uh, oxymethalone is more toxic than dianabol and it's, it, it comes in 50 milligrams. So it's a pretty heavy dose, unlike the dianabol that comes in 10 milligrams only. Mm. So you can split the dose or you can take half of the dose, of course. Uh, now, uh, for, for bulking, uh, this guy uh, asks about bulking. Yeah. Yeah. So he has three agents of bulking test, equipose, and uh, DECA. Yeah. So okay. he needs, I think, a dianabol also. No, Winstrol, he said. Yeah, he's doing test, DECA, equipoise, and Winstrol. Okay, take off Winstrol because it, it shouldn't be used during the off-season. The reason is it dries out joints and you can have severe uh, 
uh, rupture, you know, and uh, if you lift heavy with a windstall, you're killing yourself. Mm. You're flooding with uh, ruptures. Right. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful anabolic, but it's better to use anavar, for instance, because it has no impact on the joints because windstall cuts off aldosterone. Now, if you combine it with uh, decadurabolin, then you have the negative effect. Deca stimulates aldosterone and uh, weaning cuts off aldosterone. But why to use so much toxic compounds in the off-season? Okay, you want to use a toxic compound, use dianabol, but also you have the estrogenic effect or oxymethalone maybe. But leave winstrol for the, you know, save winstrol for, for the cutting phase. Right. Yeah. Uh, so if this guy has the three basic agents. You may add some tremble on anthate, but this is kind of progressive, you know? Yeah. Shouldn't need and that I, for, uh, at, his, at his level, he probably doesn't need it yet, I wouldn't think. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Okay. Got a question about creatine, of all things. It's not yeah. all about not all about drugs, guys. It's not a steroid. Uh, okay. It's not. <laughs> Some people think it is. Uh, question for the doc: Should I keep using six grams of creatine every day or stop? Since I'm a psych, I ask. Since I'm a cyclist, is taking it helping my cycling or hurting it? Since I will weigh more but have more strength. One more thing: Cyclists have used ED pills to improve their performance. Does this really work? Now, it depends what kind of cycle. Is he sprinting or is he endurance mm. cyclist? Yeah, I don't know. Because if you are endurance, creatine would be totally useless. Mm. You need ATP production and phosphocreatine for sprinting and uh, running indoors. Cycling indoors is, of course, uh, very necessary to use creatine monohydrate mi micro-ionized, which is easily diluted. Yeah. And you can perform a loading phase 20, 20 grams from Monday to Friday. And then, then the next week you can use uh, a conservative dose of five grams for one week. So for uh, one month. So have this cycle four weeks on, four off. Okay. Uh, now if he's endurance, he doesn't need this. He needs other agents like, for instance, lactate buffers because uh, they produce also lactase when they go up hills. Yeah. Uh, and also he has to watch out his serum creatinine, so the creatinine in the blood, and his GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. Now, because creatine is also contained in the muscles, it's also produced by the kidneys and the liver, and um, is converted to creatinine, it elevates the levels of creatinine in the blood. That's why eating too much of red meat may elevate your creatinine because of the creatine that is contained within the muscles. Hmm. And muscles uh, in a... Uh, Creatine in Greek, the etymology comes from the word kreas, which is uh, meat. meat, yes. Meat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the vegans are not capable of elevating remarkably their creatine just from the one gram that is produced from the, from the system, you know. Right. Anyway, uh, so tell him to, to perform a cycle for, if he's an indoor sprinter. A cycle, then a conservative dose, check out the labs, and then go on. But creatine needs a lot of hydration because it's the osmotic effect with water that brings from a hypertonic to a hypotonic environment. So you also need some uh, hypertonic juice, grape juice, for instance, mm -hmm. and to, to have also some carbs within for the influx of insulin into the muscle cells. Gotcha. Okay. Our final question, doctor. Do you have a snack? Because this is just a long one. Yeah. It's a long one, and uh, I don't understand what is the... the yeah, I'm um, hoping we can... Let, let's let's give it a go. Thanks for the show. Previously, I asked if reducing inflammation would lead to be able to work out more, even with the same outcome or gains. This has to be seen in relation to that working out in a dynamical matter and attentive, so lead to more experiencing with how to develop feel and control over the muscle. So we talk about mind-muscle connection, to get to know oneself better this way. But it also leads to the ability to work out sooner, meaning that one can recover faster to experience progress from insightful trainings that's sooner. Thought you should know what I meant. And when dopamine is increased by one loving to train, then test and GH automatically follows as long as one appreciates and feels on top of one's game, winning the pump versus winning about how painful it is. Uh, so English is not his first language either. And so acting like a bitch, because that surely developed naturally, no GH or test, 
as one's response to stimuli is relevant and not merely the isolated stimuli itself only. It would be great if Doc Testosterone could tell more about this, if he knows about it, because it seems many doc is kind of know a bit or want to appear like they know something on this issue, whereas when one observe their talk, they only want to boost one's confidence in them as they actually seem to know relatively little about it. Doc Testosterone might know or may not know about this, but in that case, he may be having easier access to material that could help such understanding to be developed in all of us and as a bonus to his book. This is a bit outside his field, I understand, as he is in medicine, and this area is more related to body's own mechanisms to be optimized so to work naturally. But L-DOPA was and is used to elevate GH levels in the body by reactivity to dopamine, so maybe he has some knowledge in the area. We do not really need so much to get into L-DOPA, but more of the mechanisms, how these systems work in body could be great to know about. Thanks for the great shows. Best on YouTube. Okay, thank you, Juan. Uh, you're welcome. Now, uh, what I know is that L-DOPA, which is MADO part of the drug, is among the few medications that are able to boost endogenous growth hormone production. So L-DOPA, which is prescribed for a Parkinson's disease, yeah, and there is a medication in the, in the pharmacy store called MADOPAR, uh, is able to boost G GHRH. Also another compound is the antidepressive cataprazan uh, compound, which is an antihypertensive drug. And um, it's the, the uh, thing is the clonidine uh, drug medication, the compound. Now, he also said that elevating dopamine, uh, that elevated dopamine is uh, linked with GH and testosterone. What I know is that during training, the elevated lactate is capable of producing testosterone and growth hormone. That's why high intensity workout is anabolic because uh, during uh, anaerobic and high intensity where lactate production occurs, can stimulate T and GH. So high intensity workout is anabolic. Of course, in a, is a nat, in a nat GI, the endogenous production. Yeah. What I also know is that by using dopamine agonists by drugs, medications that elevate dopamine, you may suppress the prolactin, that prolactin has an inhibitory effect to testosterone, okay? So there is a linkage between these, these things. Um, so <laughs> there was a kind of mix of all these things that I'm providing now the data that I know related to what this guy asked. Um, so I want to tell you that the, the following article would be mortality and bodybuilding on January on the magazine. Okay. And, yes. And on February, I'll give the medical indications of PEDS use. So okay. where all these drugs are used. And on March, before I come to the Arnold Classic, I'll write down this article about testosterone, the wonder medication. Okay. By Dr. Testosterone, you know, would be the ideal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm coming to talk about TRT and bodybuilding, if it's justified to be used in uh, sports that are under WADA and USADA, um, you know. That's right. You're, you're going to be taking part in that uh, big educational seminar at the Arnold Class yes, weekend. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. That's yes. That's excellent, man. Hmm. Yes, yes. I hope, I hope it's not scheduled so you miss part of the show, though. Because some, sometimes these things overlap, but oh well, you got to do what you got to do. It's on on uh, on uh, Thursday, on the 5th. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll arrive the day before and I'll leave the day after on Monday. Okay, Thursday you're good. There's no competition that's going on Thursday, so you're good. I know all the hotels are packed. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. Columbus, Ohio. You better get... Anybody watching this, if you think you're going to the Arnold, you better get your hotel now. Now. Because you're going to be... Otherwise, you're going to be like a half hour drive away from Columbus. Plus, and actually, I'm I'm coming to Boston for a few hours, so we may meet at the, at the <laughs> a few hours. <laughs> yeah, I'll meet you at the airport at the Delta at the Delta VIP lounge. We'll get a drink. <laughs> but uh, cool, doctor. Thank you so much. I I applaud you for taking that last question because I didn't even understand the question. You were That's able to get you were able to get something okay. out of it. So, yeah, we love all our viewers, guys. If you have questions, you can leave them right here in the YouTube comments. And just so you know, don't go back to old videos and leave comments. I typically only look at the newest video to get the questions for the next uh, video. So please leave your questions for the doctor 
right here under this video on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to Muscular Development, please do that. Hit the little button thing so that you get notifications of new videos. Doctor, once again. Or on the forum, yeah. On the forum. Yeah, on the forum. But yes. musculardevelopment.com, we leave it up there all the time. Questions for Dr. T. And a lot of your questions can be answered in this book, uh, Bodybuilding the Good and Bad and the Ugly. Very, very, it's packed full of information about all the PEDs that we use as bodybuilders, uh, structurally, how they work, how they're used, things to watch out for, all kinds. It's, it's something, if you're using steroids or you're thinking about using steroids, that's an excellent book to pick up. And you can get that on Amazon.com or on the website, GTOUL.com. Doctor, thank you. You tackled 10 questions. This was episode 37. We're rolling right along with this. Man, you're, you're putting a lot of good info out there, doctor. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, everyone, for watching Ask Dr. Testosterone. We will see you next week.